In the last video, I made a custom leg vise out of some materials that I had in my shop. And today we're going to install it in my friend Sean Stone's shop. And the workbench we're going to be installing it on is just a regular 2x4 style uh, utilitarian screw to the wall workbench. So if you don't have a dedicated solid top workbench, then this option might be for you. A few items that we will need for the installation are the leg vise itself, the retaining nut that will be mounted on the inside of the workbench, a handsaw, a hand plane to clean up the top surfaces once complete, and some crackers. Now we did also use a jigsaw router and hand drill, uh, those aren't pictured here. The screw that is used in the leg vise is actually a scaffold leveling leg, so the nut that is used to adjust the height of the scaffold uh, is going to be the retaining nut on the inside of the workbench. And before we can use this, we need to drill a couple holes to secure this to the inside of the workbench with just some generic wood screws. Now before we mount the leg vise to the workbench, there's a couple things that need to be done. Number one, uh, we need to kind of join these two independent legs and stiffen them up just slightly. So to do that, we're adding a section of dimensional lumber. This is a 2x10 or 2x12, I'm not exactly sure which. And it's just going to be secured with screws to the independent legs behind it. 3 quarter inch plywood was used as the workbench top, uh, which is fine, but it overhangs the base assembly by just a little bit, not quite 3 quarters of an inch. So to make this whole process just a little bit easier and make everything line up, uh, we don't necessarily need to shim the entire base to match the overhang. Instead, we're going to add a front jaw to the vise, and to do so, we need to remove just a little bit of material uh, on the plywood top, just where it overhangs the base where the vise will be. The start and stop faces of this particular cutout were established with a handsaw, and then the rest of the material on the inside can be rough cut with a jigsaw, and then we wanted to use a flush trim router bit to clean up the back face, but it didn't really work out as planned. The flush trim router bit that we used was pretty small in diameter, and the bearing ended up gouging into the 2x material, the frame material, below the plywood top, causing an uneven cut surface. And it wasn't the end of the world because all this is going to be covered up by the, the rear jaw of the vise, but better results probably could have been had had we had access to a larger diameter flush trim router bit. Here you can see why the top needed to be notched out, and that's for the rear jaw of the vise. This is going to be secured to the workbench with six screws, hoping that whatever shape the structure is behind it, this piece of, of 1x4 pine takes on that shape. So it, I'm, I'm wanting it to twist and contort or do whatever it needs to do to take on that shape, because that'll tell me that it's a nice, solid connection. And I'm making sure that the screw heads are uh, countersunk below the surface by quite a bit, because if this thing does twist, which it did, then I can come back with a hand plane and plane the surface nice and flat so that when the front jaw is closed, there's not going to be any gaps. It's going to be a nice, consistent, solid connection throughout all of the clamping area. After some careful measuring and marking, the screw hole can be drilled out, and we position this so that once the vise is closed, the top of the vise will be a little bit proud of the top of the workbench surface. It's better to be a little bit proud and then plane it nice and flat than it is to be a little bit low and you can't add material to make the height the same as the top of the workbench. So this is only going through the front piece of material that we added and right in between the two legs behind it. Once the hole is drilled, we can install the vise and thread the nut on from the back side and then secure the nut with a couple wood screws. The leg vise that we are installing is modeled after the leg vise that I use in my shop and to prevent the bottom side from racking, I have a wedge that I kick left and right. This varies the thickness in between the bottom of the leg vise and the workbench leg. Sean's not going to use a wedge, at least not today. Uh, instead, he's just going to shim it as needed with a couple pieces of scrap material. And the second thing that my leg vise has is a a block of wood, some type of pin or rod, whatever you want to use, that will go from the leg vise itself to the workbench. And what this does is it prevents the front of the 
leg vise from rotating clockwise as you advance the screw of the vise. That's all this does. It's just a block of wood secured to the side of the leg vise. In Sean's case, we uh, had to notch out a little section of the interior part of the workbench that we just built up and we just secured a scrap piece of wood in uh, to fit inside this notch. It's nothing fancy. Its only purpose again is just to prevent the vise from rotating clockwise as the screw is advanced. Once everything is installed the vise should retract and advance very easily with one finger and provide way more clamping force than what you'd probably ever need. Uh, only thing left to do is clean up the top surfaces making sure everything is in line and then the vise is ready for use. This project is inexpensive, relatively easy to make, and can be adapted to pretty much anything with one solid leg and a solid foundation of some sort, whether it's a typical heavy duty solid body workbench that's freestanding in the shop, or something like this that isn't necessarily large in mass, but does have a solid foundation and is secured to the wall. Now, as I said, this was made for my buddy Sean Stone in Sean's shop. And if you'd like to see the first project that he made utilizing this vise, then check down in the description below for a link to click on to Sean's channel. Uh, while you're there, be sure to subscribe. He makes a lot of pretty cool stuff. And thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a great day.